in the last class i have discussed about uh, what is soil structure or soil foundation interaction and then i have discussed about various uh, mechanical model where the soil is idealized by spring for the and then for two parameter model soil is idealized by spring and the shear layer or spring uh, or by uh, tension membrane or spring and then by beam because uh, uh, in the first uh, soil model that I have discussed uh, is Winkler model where the so uh, soils are idealized by spring uh, and those springs are linear spring discrete and there is a lack of uh, continuity in this, those springs. So to uh, remove those uh, limitations then the improved models are suggested where those uh, continuities are removed where then the springs are uh, connected by uh, tension membrane or by a shear layer or by uh, beam. So the next model of that uh, among those improved model is the car model. In the car model, in the last class, I have discussed about the Pasternak model. Where suppose this is the surface, and these are the shear layer, and these springs are connected by this shear layer. So, this is that shear layer. and loads are applied on this layer. So, this is the model which is proposed by Pasternak. So, this is shear layer. And this is spring. And the expression was over the shear modulus of GCLRs is GP and the spring constant of the spring are Ks. So, the expression that was available uh, for this case that QXY is Ks into WXY minus GP del square w x y. <coughs> so, these are the model that I have explained in the last class of the Pasternak model. In the car model that suppose if this is x in this direction this is z. So, similarly in the car model we will get for so this is x direction and perpendicular direction this is z and this uh, normal uh, downward direction this is z and in this direction this is oi. Then first soil is idealized by one sp these springs and then this shear layer is placed in between two springs. then springs are again placed to idealize the soil. So, that means shear this is the shear layer with shear modulus g p this is and here again the load is applied with q x y or concentrated load can be also applied. Now, here we will get so this is springs with spring constant with spring constant say k k 1 
k 2 and this is the spring constant k 1. So, this is this is produced by the car. So, this is this is the car model. So, these are the two where both the cases shear layer is used but in the first case Pasternak model shear layer is used top of the springs to connect these springs. Here the shear layers are used shear layer is used in between two spring to connect these springs. So, with the different uh, spring constant. So, here it is k 1 it is k 2 k 1 and k 2 are the spring constant and g is the shear modulus of the shear layer. Now, in that case the response function will be for the car model 1 plus if I uh, consider this is k 2 by k 1 to p or q this is q x y that is equal to g by k 1 del square q x y plus k 2 w x y minus g del square w x n y. So, here another term that here the this is q x y k is w g p del square w here this term is k 1 and k 2 that will be introduced here. So, now, if that k 1 is 3 times of k 2, then this expression will be 4 third q x y. If I put k 1 is 3 times of k 2, then this will be 4 third q x y minus g three k two del square q x y that is equal to k two w x y minus g del square w x y. So, we will get this type of expressions which is similar to the Pasternak model. So, but here the advantage of this model over this Pasternak model then instead of two parameter model here we can use the another parameter or you can use the two different types of soil with uh, modulus of subject uh, reaction k 1 and k 2. So, and then this uh, is the advantage of this model. So, that we can use that additional uh, boundary condition is also available for this model uh, car model. So, that means here we will get two spring constant k 1 k 2. So, we will get another parameter. So, we can represent the soil behavior more correctly. So, now in this case, so this is other two other difference model for where the soils are idealized by spring or shear layer or um, to connect those springs we can use beam or tension membrane. Now, in the another limitation of the, uh, so that means in the, uh, in the last class I have mentioned that there is basic um, two limitations in the Winkler model, one is the lack of continuity. So, by this improved model we can remove that limitation because here the continuity is uh, provided by using different components. And then the next one is that in the Winkler uh, soil model, we uh, that is the linear spring is used. But if the soil behavior is non-linear, then how these linear things can be converted to non-linear things. So, that is another limitation that we have to remove there. So, now in the for that path, if I consider the uh, non-linear behavior of the soil, then we will consider
soil or you can consider that the nonlinear model now first model that will um, use that for the nonlinear part that model that the elastic plastic representation of the soil so that is elastic plastic So, the elastic plastic representation of a nonlinear response. So, suppose you have the pressure here, this is W, the settlement, and Q is the pressure. So, we have Q and the W and the soil behavior is this one. This is the load settlement curve of the soil. So, now here we will get a elastic and plastic elastoplastic response. Then we if I draw a tangent here initial part and then another on the final part. So, that is the intersection point and here we will get say the settlement is W 0. So, we will get now this nonlinear response of the soil, this is the actual response is now converted to a linear thing for the elastic one initial post and then the plastic that is the elastoplastic response of okay. a. So, now we are converting this nonlinear response to a elastoplastic response. So, though that means for the initial part the q relation will be k 1 into w, k 1 is the initial this modulus of subgrade reaction or the initial spin constant of this initial straight line. So, that means that will be valid for any w which is less than equal to w 0. So, if w is less than equal to w 0, then the response will be q equal to k 1 into w. Now, the next one this q will be k 1 into w 0 that for w greater than equal to w 0. So, in the next part that q will be k 1 into w 0 and that w 0 is constant because this is the this is the second part that will be q equal to k 1 into w 0 if w is greater than equal to w 0. So, this is one model nonlinear model. Next nonlinear model the bilinear representation. In bilinear uh, uh, representation, suppose we have load settlement curve. So this is W is the settlement. Q is the pressure. Then we have two straight line. This is one linear portion and this is the another linear portion of the curve. So, actually this is the again the nonlinear behavior of the soil. So, this is the actual uh, behavior of the soil is this one red one that is the nonlinear behavior of the soil. So, those things we are 
converted to a different form. First one is the elastoplastic representation and second one is the bilinear representation because this is the initial part and then the next uh, another linear line. So, if I extend that second line, so that value, so that is the q 0 and then um, we will get deflection of the intersection point say w 1. So, we will get stiffness or the k 1 is the spring constant and k 2 is another modulus of subgrade reaction. So, now we will get the response q equal to k 1 into w that for w less than w 1. And next one q will be q 2 into w plus w 0. So, here this value is say w 0. So, this is for w greater than equal to w 1. So, we will get uh, this second response k 2 into w plus w 0 or we can put any other value. So, that is is the 2 bilinear representation of a curve. In the third model that uh, model which is uh, defined that is a nonlinear model. that is uh, one thing is proposed by Chandra. Nineteen seventy nine, where this is soil behavior, this is settlement, and Q is the pressure. So, we will get a polynomial uh, relationship that we can use q equal to k 1 w minus k 2 w to the power q. Now, to determine k 1 and k 2, we have to plot q by w versus square. So, now if I put that is q by w this will be k 1 minus k 2 w square. So, now if I plot this q by w versus w square then the slope of this line will give the k 1 value and the intersection intercept will give this k 1 and k 2 value. So, that means from here will this k 1 and k 2 value. So, suppose we will get this type of curve. So, if I plot w square here and q by w, then we will get this type of curve. So, that slope and the intercept that will give us. So, 
So this will give give us the k one. So intercept will give us the k one and slope will give us minus k two. So this slope that will give us minus k two. So that means slope and intercept from these two things will get the k one and k two value. So this is another representation of the nonlinear response of the soil. And then and here in the previous response that here we have used this value is q zero because uh, w zero and then uh, we use this expression though that part will be so this is the two response one is elastoplastic representation and is bilinear re representation and then third one is the nonlinear representation so another nonlinear representation representation you can provide that is provide corner Nineteen sixty-three. Where also suppose this is a nonlinear behavior of the soil, and initial part that slope is a q zero, k zero. So k zero is the initial. Modular coefficient of modular subgrade reaction. Or initial spring constant, and then so suppose this is again Q is the pressure, W is the settlement, and if I Draw this parallel line from this ultimate load point. Then you will get this point is Q ultimate. So this value will give Q ultimate. So Q ultimate is the ultimate Q ultimate is the ultimate load. Load carrying capacity of soil. Then, according to Kohner, the representation is Q K zero or K S zero W one plus K zero W Q. Ultimate. So this is one. So this is another represent nonlinear representation of the soil behavior. So these are the few nonlinear models that we can use. So in the winkler spring also, this uh, springs are you uh, assume as a linear model. So using this nonlinear uh, model, we can remove that limitation also. So the next thing that is the another thing that will start that is elastic continuum model. So in the elastic continuum models, that is continuous response of the soil medium seems from the work of Bushnik. So that is first Bushnik 
propose the uh, work on this area. So, that year is 1985. So, according to the Bussenig that we analyze the problem as a semi infinite. So, that is a semi infinite. homogeneous isotropic ek linear elastic solid so here yeah, the soil is idealized as semi infinite, homogeneous, isotropic, linear, elastic soil solid, which is subjected to a concentrated force which act normal to the plane boundary. So, here it is subjected to a concentrated load which is act normal to the plane boundary. Now, first that we will consider that for the isotropic elastic continuum. So, suppose we have one this is soil surface and one concentrated load is applied here this is x direction this is z direction. So, there will be one deformation will be in this form. So, that means, here we will get this is u and this is w are the two different deformation component. So, in the plane stream problem or in the plane problem a state of plane strain exist in the x z plane. So, plane problem the state of plane strain exists the plane strain exists in the x and z plane. So, displacement component v in the y direction is 0. So, displacement component v in y direction is 0. So, first we are going that elastic continuum models, the Bussinic first proposed that. So, here the first model that we are taking the isotropic elastic continuum, where in the plane strain problem that will exist, suppose you apply a load P, the plane strain problem exists in x z plane and displacement comp component V in y direction is 0. So, the non-zero stresses that is sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z and tau x y. So, these are the non-zero stresses. So, that the surface deflection w at x 0, the w x at 0 point in the z direction can be so, the surface deformation surface displacement in 
z direction w x that will give 2 p 1 minus mu s square divided by pi e s into log x plus c. So, the surface disp dis displacement in z direction in this plane um, problem that will be 2 p 1 minus mu s square pi e s log x plus c where c is an arbitrary constant. So, c is an constant. So, c is an arbitrary constant. So, now we will get this expression if it is a plane problem which is a concentrated load applied on the surface. In the next problem that if the UDL is applied on the surface, suppose the same thing this is x direction here, this is z direction. So, one uniformly distributed load which is applied whose intensity is q and width of this loaded region say 2 b. So, in that in that case we will get another expression of the displacement of the surface of the half plane subjected to uniform distributed load u. In that case w x z will give 2 q 1 minus mu s divided by pi g s 0 to the power infinity e to the power zeta z by zeta square 1 plus zeta z sin zeta b cos zeta x d zeta, where q is the stress intensity of the load and g s is e s divided by 2 1 plus mu s that is shear modulus and e s is elastic modulus or young modulus mu s is the Poisson ratio. So, this is the expression for the if it is uniformly loaded region. So, the next one is isotropic elastic haspe. So, that is if I go for the isotropic Then the displacement, if we consider that in the surface of this loaded region, so that means if the surface we applied a concentrated load, this is in the direction of R, this is in the Z, and another one applied the UDL. with 2 a is the loaded region, this is z 
this one is r. So, we will get a axisymmetric condition. So, that means, here for the isotropic elastic half phase, then you will get the surface deflection for the concentrated load P dash and here the intensity in Q dash. So, we will get W R into Z R Z is equal to P dash 4 pi G S R to 1 minus mu s plus z square, z square by r square. So, here similarly G s is the shear modulus and mu s is the Poisson ratio. and we will get r square is equal to small r square into z square that is capital R square is small r square plus z square. So, if is the uniform loaded is applied then the deformation will be r z q star into a divided by 2 g s 0 to infinity 1 by eta to 2 1 minus mu s plus turn to z e to the power minus to z into z 0 it r to z 1 it a into d theta. So, and the surface deflection at the center of the loaded region. So, this is at the any point. So, at the center displacement at the center of the loaded region we will get w 0 0 that will be 1 minus mu s q dash a divided by g s. So, now here this z 0 term and z 1 term are 0 it and first order vessel function. of first kind respectively. So, these are the two different uh, condition well, one is concentrated load another is UDL for isotropic elastic half space medium. So, in the next one that we will consider that is the uh, third type of condition that we will consider that is the orthographic elastic continuum. So, that is your orthographic So, that is orthotropic elastic continuum, where we will get the expression that is available 
that q x z that is equal to q if it is a udl pi k1 minus k2 integration l12 by k2 minus l22 k2 t2 l12 k1 l22 k1 t1 to dz so there we will get the deformation for this condition so here l12 is mu dash 1 plus mu divided by ez l22 is equal to 1 by ez 1 minus mu dash square ex by ez l11 is equal to 1 minus mu square by ex and l 4 4 is equal to 1 by z dash. Now, k 1 dash k 1 square is equal to 1 by l 2 2 into l 1 2 plus l 4 4 by 2 plus c to the power half by 2 and k 2 square that is equal to 1 by l 2 2 l 1 2 plus l 4 4 divided by 2 minus c to the power half by 2 where c is equal to 4 l 1 2 square plus l 4 4 square plus 4 l 1 2 l 4 4 minus 4 l 1 1 l 2 2. So, these are the expression by which we can determine for the orthotropic elastic continuum case what would be the deformation surface deformation. And then here we will get that E is the here we will get the E and somewhere we are using that E dash. So, we will get the E will be the Young's modulus for the plane of isotropy. So, E will be the Young's modulus for the plane of isotropy and E dash will be the again Young's modulus for directions perpendicular perpendicular to the plane of isotropy. Similarly, we will get the expression of G that G is if I consider that is E divided by 2 1 plus mu that is shear modulus for the plane of isotropy. Similarly, G dash will be shear modulus which character which 
which characterizes the distortion distortion of the angle between isotropy plane and its normal. So, we will get if we get E, e dash e is the Young modulus in the plane of isotropy, E dash is the Young modulus in the direction of perpendicular to the plane of isotropy, shear modulus is the shear e, G is the shear modulus in the plane of isotropy and G dash is the shear modulus which characterizes the distortion of angle between the isotropic and its isotropy plane and its normal. Similarly, we have mu and mu dash. So, similarly the value of mu is Poisson ratio ratio which which characterizes the contraction in the plane of isotropy. So basically here x y plane when tension is applied in the same plane and mu dash mu dash will be the Poisson ratio which characterizes the contraction in the plane of isotropy when tension is applied in the direction perpendicular to this plane. So, we have two mu, one is mu and mu dash. So, mu dash is the Poisson ratio which characterizes the contraction in the plane of isotropy when tension is applied on the same plane. Another is Poisson ratio which characterizes the contraction of the plane of isotropy when tension is applied direction to the normal of this plane. So, one the different direction of the tension one is applied to the same plane another to direction to the perpendicular to the plane then this will give you the mu and mu dash. So, these are different model that we are talking about. So, next model that we will explain that is the Vlasov model. So, in the Vlasov model So, that means in the consider the state of plane strain. So, this is considered state of plane strain in the elastic layer in the x z plane. Then the displacement components are so 
so u x z that is equal to 0 then w x z that will be w x into h z where h x z or that is described the variation of displacement w x z in the z direction. So, we will have the h x z function which will show the variation of the displacement y x z in the z direction. Now, several variation of the proposed including the linear and exponential variation. So, several variation is proposed including the linear and exponential variation. So, now if we have in the Vazov model, if we have the soil, let us suppose it is x and here we have a z direction here. Then if this is the thickness of the soil layer is h and we have one component if, segment if I consider. And if load is applied over there with the intensity q x, then this segment is d z, then definitely we have tau x z, because here the state of plane strain elastic layer in the x z, this is the x z plane, where the this is the elastic layer we consider and displacement components u x z 0 and w x z is w x and h z, where h is the variation of the describes the variation of displacement in the z direction. Now, several variations of tau x, if we have the tau x here, then tau x z plus del tau x z divided by del x to d x. So, we have this variation. So, now this variation of different h v value. So, h z that will be 1 minus nu, where nu is equal to z by h this is one variation and another one we can say this is h z that is equal to sin h gamma h minus z divided by l divided by sin h gamma h divided by l. So, here gamma l r constant. So, now the expression using the principle of virtual work, the expression of the q x 
the final response function that we will get that is k into w x minus 2 t d square w d x square this is w x. For this model we will get so the here also this is a two parameter model where we will get k is one parameter t is another parameter. So, where k is related to e 0 1 minus mu s 0 to h d h d z to t power square d z and t is equal to e 0 4 1 plus mu 0 0 to h a square z d z where e 0 is e s 1 minus mu s square and mu 0 is mu s 1 minus mu s. So, it is very important to note that that g p t and k s are the directly related to E s and mu s, where E s is the Young's modulus of the soil and mu s is the Poisson ratio. So, these are the response that we will get for this Blasov model. Now, so in this class we have discussed about various other type of model, improved model and then some nonlinear model to overcome the limitation of the Winkler model and then how to uh, determine the settlement response at various different condition of the that is also explained in this class. So, next class I will explain about the how the beams is uh, behaves if it is resting on elastic foundation. Thank you.